please subscribe and don't forget to press the bell icon to get notified whenever we upload a new video. Shireen Bhan. Some of which uh, uh, you would ideally like to rationalize. You've still uh, got a fairly complicated group structure which you would like to simplify even further. At the start of 2018 and as we look at a new financial year, what is the vision that you have for the group? <laughs> that's, a, that's a big question. Um, I think if you look at the group, uh, the biggest strength we have is the uh, brand that we have. And uh, we are present in, yes, 100 odd companies. But primarily, they follow uh, a pattern. If you really look at um, all the companies, you can classify them into at least I have put them into eight different industries. Mm -hmm. And there are three big companies who form their own vertical, if you, if you may. Tata Steel, Tata Motors, and TCS. But if you take the remaining companies, they fall into uh, financial services and a lot of businesses around infrastructure and uh, business around consumer and retail mm -hmm. and business around um, tourism. So <clears throat> we're trying to see how we can bring all these companies together and drive A, simplification, B, synergy, and then scale. You know, simplification, synergy, and scale, you just articulated for us broadly the buckets that you envisage the group taking forward. You've already started the process of bringing together the disparate or uh, different entities within a similar vertical. You've started that with the defense business, and you're putting some of those pieces together. Uh, how soon can we expect you to move on the other pieces and create these vertical clusters, so to speak? I think we are... Uh, <clears throat> We are moving on all each each one of these uh, verticals as we speak, but it's just that uh, in some verticals it's going to be easy because all the companies are probably unlisted. In some uh, verticals it's going to be a uh, little bit difficult because there's going to be listed companies, unlisted companies. So the way to look at it is uh, uh, overall I think uh, roughly there are about 32 companies which will be the holding companies. Mm -hmm. And uh, we've got to see how we can um, either consolidate or synergize between these companies. And uh, so the process is on. It's not that we are uh, moving one after another. We're working on all dimensions. OK, so you're moving parallelly across all yeah. of these, and you, uh, you, you're looking at 32 holding companies. If I may uh, talk to you about uh, some of the new opportunities that have opened up, especially the new opportunities that open up in a space that the Tatas have traditionally been, uh, uh, been operating in and continue to operate in. And I'll start by asking you about Air India. Uh, the, the government has put out the uh, uh, information memorandum for public consumption. Uh, the question is, will you consider bidding for Air India or not? I think you've tried this on multiple times. <laughs> I'll, try, I'll try one more time, sir. <laughs> See, there is a deadline which extends till, uh, I think, middle of May. 14th so, of May. So wouldn't we leave it at that? <laughs> so so, so let, me, let me ask you this, because the deadline for sending in queries to the government expires on the 16th of April. So have you, uh, have you sent in your queries to the government on Air India? I think I don't want to answer this in the media. <laughs> Let me, let me rephrase my question. Whether you choose to bid or not is a different story altogether. But given the fact that you already have two aviation companies in India, Tata Vistara and, of course, uh, AirAsia India, would it be of interest to consider another airline foray? Uh, it's a low multiple business. Do you really want to continue to be in another low multiple business? I think you're giving a lot of answers to me. <laughs> Do I make sense? You make a lot of sense. I make a lot of sense. So, so, so that, does that mean that a, a low multiple mm -hmm. business may not necessarily be of no, interest I think, at I think this it, point? The issue is not whether it's a low multiple business or a high multiple business. Yes, the fact is, yes, we are already in two different airlines. And um, whether this uh, adding one more airline, uh, however um, attractive or unattractive or complicated uh, it may be. Um, it's a question that we need to think through, and uh, there are many factors to consider, but all your questions are valid.
Okay, all my questions are valid. I think that is the most I will get out of you uh, as far as Air India is concerned. So let me let me talk to you about another issue that I know that uh, uh, that you're focused on, and that is uh, cleaning up balance sheets across across companies and across the group. Uh, how confident do you feel that the balance sheet repair process that you've started will be completed in this financial year, and you are going to move towards stronger cash flows next year? I think we are well on our way. If you really look at it, the biggest one was uh, Tata Teleservices. That's, uh, uh, we are going through that process and the transaction has to conclude, then uh, that will be done, hopefully, this year. Then we have uh, looked at Tata Steel, and Tata Steel, uh, we have uh, found a solution in the form of a joint venture in Europe. Mm -hmm. Again, that's in the works. That transaction has to conclude. And once that is done, some part of the debt will go away as part of the joint venture. Then we are focused on uh, expanding Tata Steel. Uh, we have already said that we want to double our capacity in India. Mm -hmm. So we have made a number of moves, and you know everything. Uh, it's all in the media. Uh, <clears throat> then there is uh, some issues with uh, Tata Motors. That company is going about it. Tata Power is also addressing it. I think. Um, I must say that we must uh, be significantly better by the end of this year. Significantly better by the end of this year. Yeah. Uh, I'll, I'll individually pick up on each of those points. And let me start by asking you about Tata Steel and two specific questions there on Tata Steel. Because yesterday we heard from Thyssen Group saying that they feel confident uh, of being able to conclude the process of putting that joint venture together, perhaps in the first half of the year. The due diligence process is also moving forward. Uh, so. A, things on track as far as the Thyssen Group joint venture is concerned, and B, uh, you know, the India opportunity for steel, uh, you've looked at stressed assets, Bhushan Steel is one of the companies that Tata Steel has, has decided to pick up, and now you've got a battle in the steel business on between ArcelorMittal, uh, JSW, and, uh, and even somebody like Vedanta. So, you know, how is the steel business looking like uh, in India today? So I think on the uh, Thyssen Group, uh, a joint venture. I, we are progressing it. We are uh, we are on track, I would say. Um, but nevertheless, you know, there is a process you have to go through, and there are a number of steps in this whole thing. Uh, so we are pretty confident that we will uh, um, conclude it um, as per our uh, timelines. Mm -hmm. Second, uh, as part of the India steel business, it's a very attractive market. I think we have a huge. Uh, uh, expansion opportunities in India um, because the overall capacity is uh, around 75 million tons or whatever. I think it can uh, really double and triple in India given India's needs. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> we have taken a call that we will do an organic expansion at our plant in Kalinganagar of 5 million tons and then a uh, couple of assets we have gone for. So with that, uh, our doubling the capacity plan will be on track if mm -hmm. you're able to conclude all these transactions successfully. With regard to competition, I think you need to do another interview, I think. Why another interview? I can, I can, I can get one comment in about the competitive landscape and the, the bitter battle no, that think, we're seeing uh, play think, out in uh, India. I, th I think, the, the, see, these are all new capacity. These are all not new capacities. They're, these are existing capacities. Yes. So. Whoever wins doesn't matter. It is why, the same why, why did you not show any interest in SR Steel? Well, I think we have our hands full with if we do these uh, transactions that I have talked about, um, our hands will be full for the time being. Mm -hmm. So I don't think that we can. It's not only a, a financial thing, also in terms of uh, execution, etc., our hands will be full. Okay. For the time uh, being. You know the the other two businesses that you uh, that continue to drive the uh, growth for the group, uh, Tata Motors and and TCS. Let me start by asking you about TCS because that is a that is a company that uh, that you've lived and breathed uh, while you've been at the Tatas. Uh, a enjoying the fact that you don't uh, uh, have to sort of deliver on the quarterly numbers uh, quarter after quarter. In fact, you would have been doing doing your boardroom uh, what today or tomorrow if you were still at TCS. Enjoying the fact that you don't have that quarterly 
pressure? And B, uh, what is the external environment looking like today as far as Indian IT is concerned? Uh, you know, the world reacts to every tweet that comes in from President Trump, uh, and, and, uh, and that prove, is proving to be a bit of a constraint and a challenge, not just for Indian IT companies, but for the entire process of globalization. So what is the outlook for Indian IT? I think on the first question, I, uh, I've enjoyed my job every single day for the last 30 years. So I've enjoyed TCS, I enjoy, I'm enjoying my current job. So it's not a question of missing, uh, missing that or missing this. I think there is enough fun in, in, uh, in, in, in doing this job, as much as I had fun at TCS. Um, with regard to IT industry, I have said that it's, um, it's a great industry. It's going to be um, uh, seeing enormous growth. I feel that the uh, uh, TCS definitely I can talk for. All the investments have been done in terms of um, how to operate in the new world, mm. which is uh, dominated by uh, AI, analytics, machine learning, deep learning, IoT, whatever you want to call it. Um, that throws up enormous opportunities because every company has to reinvent itself, and you can see the order book that TCS has clocked in in the recent months. So I believe that um, the Indian industry growth story will continue. You believe that the Indian mm. growth story will continue, uh, yeah. will continue for yeah. the IT and sector? You know, I think the regulatory changes will happen all the time. Mm. That's fine. That's a cost of doing business. So every market in which you operate um, is uh, facing challenges. Okay, they have their own um, you call it uh, joblessness or you call it sure. uh, automation, you call it whatever. No, I understand. So those that, things will. No, I understand uh, that you're going to have it's to. Not it's no, not it's new. No, it's not new, and, and you will have to, to sort of uh, keep pace with the changes in the regulatory environment. But what do you see as fundamentally changing or shifting for the Indian IT services model? I mean, offshore, near shore, all of that is now factored in how you deal with the and cope with the visa restrictions, etc. But, you know, as we move forward, the error, as we move forward, the the era of 20% plus kind of margins which we've gotten used to for the Indian IT sector. Do you believe that that is likely to continue? What is, what is the outlook from a, from a business model perspective and what is the big shift that you see now? See, I have, 